at what point do you feel like you became a mature competitor? Kind of towards the end of like that sophomore year, like you know, like the first part, I kind of feel like I was like I was putting the you no know, like I was putting the blame on other people mm -hmm. and not really looking within. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So like underdog, like your story needs to be heard. Like this whole thing is about celebrating underdogs and just telling their story. Underrated, underrated, we the underdogs, underestimated. Yeah. Underrated, underrated, we the underdogs, underestimated. We the ones. Yeah, yeah, we the ones. Yeah, yeah, we the ones. We the ones. Like pressure exposes, it exposes who you're really made of. Mm -hmm. And so like for me, like I was telling you when we were on the court, you know, like if I'm gonna, they say fatigue makes cowards of us all or whatever it is, I wanna expose my cowardness. You know, I wanna expose that in private. You, I don't ever wanna be exposed in public when the bright lights are on, when you're playing Houston, if my left hand is whack, if I get fatigued and my jump shot is short, I want to expose my my weakness. Um, is that, do you take that approach as you train in the off season where you kind of like, I think you gotta be built different, where you work so hard that you uh, show your weaknesses, where most people, they work just short of exposing those weaknesses. How does that work for you? Yeah, just like, I mean, like you said, embracing it, like, you know what I mean? Cause at some point, like, if you try to ignore it, it's going to come back around. Like, it comes full circle. Right. Everything comes full circle. But, like, just embracing it, you know what I mean? Like, just really acknowledging that I have to work on that or whatever it is, you know, acknowledging it and then just attacking it and going from there. Mm -hmm. like, you know, starting to see progress. But main thing is just, like, attacking it and just, you know, being not content with it, but just facing it. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Let me ask you this. Like, going back to Colorado, um, I can tell. I've known you, you little bro. I've known you since you were, you know, before you had all the little facial hair, you know what I'm saying? When you were just like a little 14-year-old kid, you know what I'm saying, getting buckets. Um, is you're a, you're a mature competitor now, right? Mm -hmm. At what point do you feel like you became a mature competitor? Um, probably say like, Kind of towards the end of like that sophomore year, like you know, like the first part, I kind of feel like I was like I was putting the you no know, like I was putting the blame on other people mm -hmm. and not really looking within. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I really didn't. I mean, you no know, people were telling me things, but like I really didn't have nobody like what it is like you know really telling me like what it is, telling me what it is. You know what I mean? Like or how to really handle it. Like I felt like it was just kind of me, just like. Just, I just had to figure it out, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like people, of course people was telling me like, you know, you, you'll be good, whatever, whatever, but I felt like, I don't know, it's just kind of for me to figure it out, like for me to take the next step, like it had to be me figuring it out. But just like, yeah, like that, that second, probably like the second semester of that year, just like, I kind of just went back to the drawing board and just like, all right, like I'm gonna just restart from zero. Like, mm -hmm. Pretend like I'm trying to get back, you know, I'm trying to go to another school. Cause that was the plan for transfer. So like now I'm like, well now I'm planning to, go to another school so like now I'm restarting from zero just working on everything and just becoming cons consistent you know what mm -hmm. I mean? just like you know like embracing the situation here like it is what it is but mm -hmm. I'm gonna try to use this these practices and whatever I'm doing here and lifting to mm -hmm. help me for the next place I go to for my mm -hmm. next spot for the next level yeah you know I mean and, and just, just like, and just so so they know I just uh, that sophomore year you went from averaging 17 points and it's Seven, excuse me, 17 minutes to 12 minutes. Mm -hmm. So that had to be deflating. You know what I'm saying? And then that's when you had to, you looked, like you said, you looked yourself in the mirror. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's just like you, I think that, especially as Hoopers, right? You're a four-star recruit. And in high school, like, you think you're ready? Like, if I would have asked what? you when you were a senior at Denver East and you had just graduated, are you mature? Are you a competitor, a, a mature competitor? You would have been like, hell yeah, right? Yeah, I'm like, yeah, definitely. You, you think you thought you was ready, yeah, and then was. like everybody like kind of kisses your butt. You know, everybody caters to you. That's that's mm -hmm. one of the things I hate about the uh, the youth competitive basketball culture. You see 12, 13, 14 year olds, and like grown men are like like kissing their butt, telling them how good they are mm -hmm. instead of giving them that real. And then now they go and they've ne then they get slapped in the face with reality and either you're going to figure it out or you're not. Mm -hmm. It reminds me, 
One of my really good friends who's an accomplished executive at Walmart, Cedric, he says, Cedric Clark, he says, you don't have to fight every, you don't have to win every fight, but you have to fight every fight. And I, the way I say it is there's fruit in the fight, right? And what I mean is, is like you developed your underdog DNA, even though you weren't playing a lot. Yeah. When you made the decision like, I'm going to go fight, even if I lose, even though I know I might not play, I'm going to show up and practice every day. I'm going to fight every fight. How much did that allow you? Just And just so you guys know, he's last year he averaged 21 points. Um, he was a, he was runner-up for player of the year, and he probably will be preseason player of the year and preparing himself to, God willing, put himself in a position to go to the NBA and definitely play professional basketball. But do you think that, like, everything that you've experienced, do you think that it was birthed in that moment when you just said, I'm just going to go hard, and even though it's – maybe not fair and I'm not playing and I'm riding the bench, but I'm going to put in the work. Do you think that this is the fruit of fighting that fight? Yeah, definitely. Like that was the moment either like I'm going to figure it out, either it's going to make or break me. Like that's kind of how I felt about that moment. Just like, you know what I mean? Just taking and embracing it. Like the whole mindset of that thing was just like, I mean, I feel like I can't do nothing but go up or go forward. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So like whether it's, a little bit daily by daily or whatever it is just trying to figure out what I can do to try to just take that next step or put myself in a better position yeah but like like you said that thing like with high school you know everybody's kissing your butt and like the crazy thing about that is like those same moments like when you know what I mean like when you go through something them same people that's kissing your butt like mm -hmm. nowhere to be found mm -hmm. they're not you know what I mean they're not like oh you're good mm -hmm. or trying to, you know what I mean like they're not yeah. trying to help you up they're not the same yeah. people still there supporting you like and that was like that was a big moment for me too, just like realizing that, you know what I mean? Just like from literally a year ago, everybody's like, oh yeah, you're this, you're that, that, like, mm -hmm. bro this, bro that. And then the next year, like, nobody hit my phone, ain't mm -hmm. nobody, you know what I mean? Like, nobody hit my phone, right. ain't nobody talking about, oh yeah, we gotta do this. Like, that just made me learn, like, I mean, just, you know, the people the same, everybody's not really there to support you. Right. You know what I mean? Everybody's Every, not there for you. Everybody in your camp ain't in your corner. Exactly. Um, yeah. You know, like uh, they say, if you live, I hope I get this right. If you live by a man's uh, compliments, you, you'll yep. die by his criticism mm -hmm. and his yep. critique. Um, and for me, like, you know, like sometimes I'm the guy like in people's life, like we were talking, Brandon behind the camera. What up, Brandon? Wow. Appreciate you. <laughs> um, we were talking um, like sometimes my job is to be the bad guy. And I told him, I said, like, I have to love somebody to tell them something that may, that may make them not speak to me. Like, I've had to tell people the truth that nobody's telling them, mm -hmm. you know, because I see, you know, what's ahead. God has blessed me to be around people that have done this at a high level, and I see their habits. I see how they respond to success. I see how they respond to failure and all these things. So I would be wrong if I sat there and I didn't have the heart and the courage to say, hey, little bro, like, if you keep doing that, dog, you're going to blow this opportunity. You know, and just being able, like, it takes a, and when you talk about what does an underdog need, they need to be intentional, would you agree, um, to go put themselves around people that are going to keep it real with them and tell me what I need to hear, even if I don't want to hear. I tell people, I spoke to Stephen F. Austin last year, I told him, I said, hey, I need you to tell me what you want, your faith or your, I mean, not your faith, your feelings or your future. I can't I can't help you with both like if you really want me to help you with your future I may say some stuff to to hurt your feelings but if you want me to worry about your feelings you know like we're we're compromising we're putting your future um, in a compromising situation which one is it mm -hmm. what do you think about that yeah that's true like you know what I mean like because people sugarcoating it and not really telling you what it is it's not gonna help you in the long run like you know in the moment it may seem cool but eventually like when when it get real and stuff hit the fan, right, like, <laughs> right, <laughs> like <laughs> all them hollow yeah. compliments wouldn't help you yeah, every twelve you. minutes, right? Like you would have wished that, like they're telling you the truth, mm -hmm. so you be prepared for mm -hmm. in case something ever hits the fan, or you don't, you ever get to that moment where you need that. But definitely, like I mean, you gotta. I feel like a lot of things is just sacrifice. Like mm -hmm. you know, you gotta sacrifice. Like you say, either your feelings or your future. Mm -hmm. Now, so like you are on the other side of this. What would you, everything you, you've been through, tell that four-star recruit that everybody was telling you, like making you think it was sweet and wasn't prepared? Mm -hmm. Because now there's one of them, hopefully, God willing, watch it. 
Like, tell them their truths. What is it that they really need to hear that maybe some people, their AAU coach, mm-hmm. um, their, their trainer, or, you know, whoever it is this, that may not be telling them, what is it that, that they need to hear about preparing themselves to go play at a high major, at the Pac-12, or the Big 12, the Big 10? Mm-hmm. What is it they need to hear? Um, first thing is, like, you're good, but you're not as good as you think you are. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Just because, like, when you're going to, if it's a big, you know, a Pac-12 school, a big major school, middle, whatever it is, like, all those players are the best players from wherever they're from. So, mm-hmm. like, somebody might be from Texas. They're the best player from Texas. Or somebody's from Mississippi. They're the best player from Mississippi. So, like, everybody's the guy coming from wherever they come from. So, like, you're really restarting. You know what I mean? Like, just how you feel like you're the guy, they feel the same way. So, like, you know, you going back to the bottom of the totem pole. And then along with that, Confidence too, like confidence is a big part of it. You know what I mean? Just humble confidence, knowing humble that. Confidence. You know what I mean? Knowing you're a good player, but at the same time, not overdoing it. You know what I mean? Being humble, and then really just like sacrifices and. I mean, what you what you want to do, what you're willing to do, like mm-hmm. a big part of it is just sacrificing. You know, some things you got to sacrifice for you to, you know, for you to make those steps and make those jumps. Well, um, I'm gonna ask you this question. Um, um, what is it right now? Because your average average twenty one points, you know, one of the top returning scorers in the country. What is it that you sac? What what is what does your sacrifice look like? What are you sacrificing for those things to happen? Um, I mean, just even more time in the gym. You know, what I mean, just like everything I do, like regardless of what I have planned that day, like I got to do something to become a better basketball player. Mm-hmm. Whether it's watching film lifting or just going to the gym but just sacrificing and then knowing that you know everybody's going to be coming at me like I said before everybody's gonna be coming at me so I have to figure out other ways to impact the game and yeah that's the main thing yeah. figuring out other ways to impact the game and still being involved in the game even though yeah. say if somebody you know, might be sending double teams still figuring out a way to impact the game in a good way not just scoring yeah and even I think to just to carry to, to add on to um, your advice to the to, to anybody watching that is where you your younger self was is I think that like in order to prepare yourself for that level you have to have this humility this statement of humility that says what was good enough to get me here is not good enough to get me there mm-hmm. just because it was good enough for me to be a star player that doesn't mean that it's good enough for me to go play in the Pac-12 or the Big 12 or whatever it is mm-hmm. you know I, I think that's what they need to understand.